All right, we're uh, live here in the uh, fish tank barn. Uh, looking forward to uh, tonight's show. So, uh, all right, we're uh, live here in the uh, fish tank barn. So, uh, to, got Lumpy Dog uh, here. So, uh, Dan right, Slee. Uh, uh, oh, so, hold on. Got Lumpy got Dog here. Got to turn down the TV. So, sorry about that. JH Aquatics is here. Hey, Joseph, how you doing? So, we'll go ahead and uh, get a lot of people roll in here for a few minutes. And uh, we'll go ahead and, and uh, get started with the show. All right. So, uh, what are you guys up to tonight? Is uh, how many of you are uh, affected by the polar vortex? Uh, fish barn for sure is uh, definitely affected. Uh, let me see the temp temperature right now in the metro Detroit area is a balmy five degrees. So, dirty tankings here. Uh, welcome. So. Uh, Lumpy Dog, I think you're kind of near me, so I think you've got the same thing. Uh, Dan and Dirty Tanking, I am not sure. So, Alright, so... Alright, so... Got six people watching now. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, first thing I want to show you guys, uh, coming up... In July is the Marine Breeders Initiative Workshop. So this is something I've been a part of since the beginning. It's been going on now for about 10 years or so. Uh, it has the 10 year anniversary. So it's at the Cranbrook Institute of Science in uh, Bloomfield Hills, Michigan. It's a great venue. So if you guys are interested in the freshwater or saltwater breeding, <laughs> fire up the furnace, boys. It's going to get cold. Yeah, for sure, Terry. Uh, welcome to the stream. Yeah, it's five degrees right now, and I think the tie tomorrow is supposed to be zero. So, should be fun. Real tanks here. Welcome. Uh, so, for those of you just joining, just talking about the Marine Breeding Initiative Workshop. It is uh, this 10th year anniversary. I've been a part of it for all 10 years, and honestly, some amazing things have happened at this event. So... Uh, if you guys are in the Michigan area, really uh, encourage you to check it out. It's uh, uh, the people who've done the yellow tangs, the blue tangs, uh, those people have all spoken. Uh, the first year we did this, it was literally how to do a fish room, and now it's advanced to basically you know, how to breed yellow tangs, how we did it. Um, a lot of zoo and aquarium people show up to this, so uh, if you guys can get it to Michigan, uh, highly recommend it. This is a really great event. So uh, we'll talk more about this as it gets as it gets closer. Uh, but I did want to give you guys some awareness to that. So let me go ahead here now, and we'll actually go on to the show. Uh, so what we're going to talk about today? Uh, this is basically how I run some things in the fish barn. And since it's cold out, I figured we'd talk about this first. So. One of the things I do is I kind of hunt down air leaks in the fish barn. And one of the biggest ones I found was the door. And this is uh, rather insane looking. Uh, but it does work. Um, I did notice the big difference once I did put the insulation on the door. Uh, once it gets warmer, um, I'll come over here and I'll clean this up a little bit. Make it look a little bit prettier. You know, maybe throw some paint on it. But uh, for now, um, this is going to be how it is so you know it's not pretty but uh i do notice i mean when i open the door you can now like see the heat come out which i didn't see before uh greg bean is here hey welcome to the chat uh if it's, i think it's your first time here i haven't recognized you so welcome uh so we're looking at my ugly door 
But uh, we're going to flip here in just a moment to the next part of this presentation, which is going to be uh, the heater. Yep, so we're flipped to the heater now. So this um, is the heater I use to heat the fish tank barn. Um, it's called an FUH-54, which is a, if you want to call it, um, it's an electric heater. Uh, it runs off of 240, so uh, it's about 5,000 watts. So, uh, V-Stag's here. Uh, hey, V-Stag, how's it going? Um, the real tank's low of 48 Fahrenheit here. Yeah, um, that'd be kind of balmy at the moment. Sorry, the chat window's over here tonight. I've kind of messed around with the settings. And I put it somewhere where I didn't want to. So I'm going to have to just kind of deal for the moment. Unless I do that. Nope. Okay. All right. So this is the uh, the heater. Um, it does... Um, I do kind of... I don't know what I'm going to do yet. With the heater, it is a little pricey to run a electric heater in here. But it does do the job. So um, I can say it works. So we're gonna flip again here in just a moment to the next uh, to the next part of the video. Yeah, I apologize. I try to to uh, time it. All right. So this is the air pump. It's not a very good picture of it, but this is the uh, Alita 60 air pump that runs the downstairs section of the fish tank barn. Uh, the upstairs is run by a Alita 40. Both of them do pretty well. Uh, don't really have any issues with them. Uh, run, you know, it runs good here. So, hey, uh, Corvus is here. Hey, Joel, how's it going? So, uh, yeah, welcome to the stream. Uh, thanks for the kind words yesterday. I really appreciate it. So, we're uh, so we're just kind of talking about things that go on here in the fish tank barn. How I run things, beat the heat. Um, Mile High Plecos is here. So. Uh, Hey Mike, how's it going? Um, so, lumpy dogs like whoa royalty in the live stream. Um, the air pump is not that noisy. Um, it's not terrible. Uh, noisier in here, like it, like sometimes you can catch it on the videos. Actually, the running water. All right, so here, and this picture doesn't do it justice. And it's not that dirty, but there is the water. Vates, the water va vats, basically. Those are two 55-gallon drums. Uh, the one towards the back is for the saltwater auto top-off, and the one in the front is for the uh, for the auto water change for the freshwater tanks. So how the auto water change works, I have it set up on my Neptune Apex system, which uh, basically it runs three times a day. Um, it's 8, noon, and 8 p.m., uh, runs for about a minute and a half and it will water change the downstairs and then I actually set the upstairs up to lag it by about an hour so it'll lag an hour and then it will go uh, it will run water through that for about a minute and a half as well so pretty happy with that system I uh, do when we get to the next picture I uh, the next picture I am going to show you some modifications that I want to make to it or at least talk about it So I uh, run this, um, there's, there we go. So this is the manifold to the auto water change system. So basically this is two inch PVC pipe. I have this running uh, with uh, ball valves and it's basically run that through, um, goes to each area of the fish barn and that will water change the tanks. So one thing I do want to do with this, um, in hindsight, I wish I would have run the larger pipe all the way around the barn so that way sorry I'm watching the chat the chat's over that way so so I, anyway so I want to what I should do is I should run the two inch pipe for a longer run and that way I can just kind of tee off the two inch pipe and have a little bit more water volume so that's kind of maybe a summertime project so you guys have any other qu any questions? Uh, just throw them in the chat, and uh, I'll get to them.
Wow, when I put that up on the bigger screen, that looks a little bit blurrier than I thought. So, so apologize for the picture. Uh, Josh, yes. Do I water um, auto top off the saltwater tank? Yes. Um, those run on the apex, and those run uh, with float switches. So I basically have a float switch for the upstairs and a float switch for the downstairs. Uh, Joel says the polar vortex says it's not a good time for plumbing. No, um, no, those, uh, no, it's not. So plumbing is a summertime activity. So, uh, so this is the sump. Uh, this is one of the sumps I run. Uh, Greg Bean, how many square feet is the barn and how many gallons of water are you running? Um... Here's what I'll tell you is the barn is a two-story, one-and-a-half-car garage. And I have no idea how many gallons are, that I'm running. Um, I'll say quite a bit. Um, let me see. I think I missed. Um, are the water change barrels on the second floor? No. Uh, water change barrels are um, they're back to, actually behind the saltwater tank. Um, and the very back portion of the barn, basically underneath where the stairs go up. So, those uh, sit, basically the saltwater tanks here, they sit right behind. Uh, Lumpy Dog, the state of Michigan has closed all state offices due to the cold. Uh, what the, yeah, I, uh, yeah, um, my wife's a teacher, uh, my kids are school age and none of them have work. Uh, so basically the state of Michigan has almost been shut down all week. So we'll hit back to the sump in a minute uh, when this cycles through again because we really missed that. So this is the uh, basically the air evacuation unit. It's just a bathroom fan. Didn't put the cover on it. I probably should, but uh, but that is the uh, that is the the fan. There's really not much to say about it. It's a fan. It feeds to the outside. So. I wish there was a way I could get this video to go back to the sump because that's kind of a that's kind of an interesting thing, and it's a cheap way to to run a sump. So when that cycles back through, we'll talk about that. Do you guys have any other questions uh, while we're waiting for that to cycle back? Let's see. Yeah, plumbing is just not good. Um, so we'll see what the uh, what the door has to say, or what we get when we get back to the door. So for those of you who just joined, I'll put this back up on the screen real quick. Uh, this is the Marine Breeding Initiative Workshop. Uh, it's going to be July 26th through 28th at the Cranbrook Institute of Science in Bloomfield Hills, Michigan. So if you can get out there, highly recommend it. Uh, we've had quite a few good speakers over the years. Uh, we were able to get the, uh, the team from Hawaii who bred the yellow tangs. Uh, we actually got the people who bred the blue tang, the, uh, the hippo tang as well. So uh, very exciting stuff happens here. I uh, get to learn quite a bit. Um, the raffle is actually pretty good as well. Um, so it's kind of a small crowd with uh, some pretty decent prizes. So... Uh, if you could get to Michigan, uh, July 26th to 28th, I would highly recommend checking it out. So we'll head back to the presentation, and so we're back at the door. Um, yeah, Corvus did does run sumps. Um, you know, he and I agree on, on that for sure. Uh, I love running sumps. I would run sumps on everything if I could. Uh, I just can't because of the, uh, the live bears seem to... Uh, take a ride through them and end up where they shouldn't uh, Or I would run sumps on all my systems, but uh, Learn the hard way with live bears literally if you don't if you want to keep guppy strings pure uh, You can't run sumps with them unless you have each individual tank on a sump because otherwise they just find ways through the sump through the filters through uh, Through back through the plumbing and the pumps and everything else so um, So some videos that are coming out 
Oh, so Dirty Tanking has a question. Um, Island Queen, welcome to the chat. Hey, Darcy, how are you? Uh, kind of off topic here, but I'm switching filtration from a homemade sponge filter to a double sponge. I killed the homemade two days ago, came home to a milky tank. Are the new ones not ready? Um, yeah, I would agree with Lumpy Dog. It's a bacteria, bacteria bloom. Um... Yeah, I would say it's a bacteria bloom. So, I honestly, um, I haven't dealt with that, but I would just let it go. Uh, the, you know, water change, keep your water change schedule up. Uh, obviously, test your tank to make sure there's nothing going on, uh, nitrate-wise, uh, ammonia, etc. Um, let's see. All right, so this is the heater for those of you just joining. Uh, it's called an FUH-54. Uh, it's made by a company called Fahrenheit. Um, I do like it. It does work pretty well. Um, it's not the cheapest thing in the world to run, but that being said, it does do the job. Uh, one thing I do find here, and it makes sense obviously, is that the upstairs is actually warmer than the downstairs. Uh, so I am a I do have some plans to kind of do some a little bit of recir air recirculation in here to kind of push pump some of the hot air back down. Uh, let's see here, dirty taking we did. Yeah, you guys can ask stuff that's off topic if you want to. Yeah, I put in new filters before um, Dirty Tank, and I've never had that, so I'm not sure on the uh, on the bloom. All right, so the, for those of you that have joined, this is the air pump. This is an Alita AL60 that runs the base, the downstairs part of the fish tank barn. Up here, we have uh, an AL40. So that runs all of the saltwater systems that are up here, as well as the freshwater systems are here that are here. Um, did anyone get any new fish over the uh, over the weekend? Um, I did end up going to Grand Rapids this weekend and hitting up the Grand Valley Aquarium Club and their swap, and there was quite a few interesting fish there. So and I got to see some uh, people that I hmm, got to see some folks. Uh, got to see uh, Jeremy from Sergeant Tank. Uh, Lucas was there, so that was a good time for sure. Uh, picked up some new uh, Gadead species, which you'll see uh, in Thursday's video. Uh, so we're going to do an unboxing of them, and then I'll, there's some video clips and, and some B-roll of those guys. So, uh, sumps are a good idea. Yes, I love sumps. Like I said, awesome. Uh, no, no telling water changes... Uh, the tw I'm guessing twice a week before it happened once before I got through it. Thank you, Mike. Yeah, thank Lumpy Dog. He beat me to it. Uh, my last Lumpy Dog is my last black uh, bacteria bloom immediately following a power outage. Um, canister filter died. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of uh, yeah, that's that I can see that. Uh, picked up two black veil tail angels and six panda cories. Cool, very cool. So, so uh, what kind of tank are they going in, Greg? I have one black veil angel, and he's absolutely enormous. So we're back to the manifold again for those who haven't seen it. Uh, so this is the uh, so basically it's two inch PVC pipe, uh, sixty five gallon. Awesome. Yeah, this screen's kind of driving me nuts because it's on the TV that's over to the side here. And so if you look at the chat, like I played with a setting on here, which I shouldn't have. So it's, uh, I can't see the chat on the screen in front of me. So, yeah, definitely good luck with the angels, Greg. So, uh, the one that I have, he's just a, uh, kind of a lone ranger. He lives with, uh, 
uh, my four uh, Severums and the five Geophagus. So he's kind of the tank boss. He kind of pushes everyone around. Though the Severums and um, you know the bigger Geophagus will kind of hold their own, but he does uh, uh, he does kind of uh, push them around. So Dirty Tank has got some glass cla uh, glass catfish. Uh, so ghostly. Yes, um, I think uh, Aquapros did a video and he did like a ghost tank and he had a bunch of glass catfish. And I don't remember the tetras that he had in there, but that was pretty neat. All right, we're at the song. So, all right, so basically what you have here, um, these are very simple to make. I make these out of a Home Depot uh, bin. So all that's in the top there is filter floss. It, there's a strainer there that basically you can use a colander. You can use anything for that. And then... Uh, basically, underneath that is your standard Home Depot, Instant Ocean, whatever bucket that you choose. Uh, drill some holes in it uh, so the water can drain out. That bucket is filled with bio balls, which then uh, basically goes into the sump and then is fed through a... Uh, basically, that is a magnet return pump in this particular picture. And that uh, feeds what I'll call the Cichlid Island. Uh, so if you saw last week's video, there's a area in the middle of the fish room uh, that's kind of an island and so that system is run off that mag 9 all right uh, king and queen cichlids is here uh, 54 punchies here so uh, welcome guys uh, yep hit the like like button so uh, for those of you that just joined we are going to talk about uh, basically some of the things I do to run the fish tank barn out here in Michigan when it's you know, going to be minus X number of degrees for the next couple days. So, I want to thank you guys all for coming out for sure. Uh, hope you guys are staying warm where you're at or cold, depending on where uh, where you are. I know JH was in here earlier, and he's definitely not uh, he's definitely not feeling the polar vortex. Uh, so, uh, Wood Wood Quadex, hey Mike, uh, how's everyone? Um, how is the barn doing? The barn is doing well. Uh, the barn seems to hold up pretty well to the uh, temperature, so the insulation in here has worked. So the one thing I did do uh, once we get back to the front part of the video is I'll show you the door. Um, it's not pretty, but it does work. So um, why are your chats auto-deleting? Um, I would say Dirty Take, be careful of the words maybe. Um, it's not giving me anything on here. Um, so, uh, King and Queen cichlids, what kind of cichlids am I keeping? Um, quite a few. So let me go through the list, uh, see if I can do it from memory. So the tank behind me right here, um, in here are, uh, basically it's mostly Africans. Uh, there are a few South Americans in here. Uh, so in the tank behind me are some... Uh, Swedish Hongai um, and Bunas. And then also in there are some auto uh, pair of Auto Fernix Tetra Stigma. And then uh, this last thing, I want to hit that real quick. And that's one of the cichlids that's in here that I spelled wrong. Is um, fundamentally a Nairi is there. But I do label all of my tanks with basically the species and where I got them. So... Uh, so I, all my tanks have these labels on there. Uh, so other cichlids we have in here. Um, there are, uh, there is one um, Victorian, uh, what is it? I'm drawing a blank. Um, Haplochromus aniacolor. Um, I had a whole group of them, but somehow he killed all the females. Uh, Slippery Fish Aquatics is here. Hey, Welcome. Uh, so let's finish the cichlids up. There's a uh, got yellow labs, purple ACI, um, some uh, zebra obliquidins. Uh, then we had downstairs. Um, downstairs we have um, I have a pair of Neo of Rio Nene Severums uh, that I bought from Pleco Paradise when I went to Chicago. Uh, they're uh, wild caught, and then I have uh, one angelfish, uh, five Geophagus heckeli. And then um, I have some discus, uh, 
and then I have uh, two species of Cyprochromus. I have Cyprochromus leptosoma katumba and Cyprochromus leptosoma maplungu. And I'm sure I said the, and I'm sure I uh, said all of those wrong. Uh, let's see what else. There's Crebenzis. Uh, there are some, and I have the guys. There's a ton of them. I just realized I have a whole boatload of cichlids. So, uh, let me see. There's more. There's a uh, Red Empress Trio. Um, got the Crebenzis. Uh, there's a pair of, or I've got a group of Neolamprologus Brevis Sunspot. Going to the other part of the Cichlid Island, there are some uh, Alanacara Ethelwaini. Um, there's uh, Demisoni on the bottom, and then going to the other side is the Cyanochromus Friari. So I think that's all of them. All right, so now I'm out of breath. And I missed a whole bunch of questions. So this is the door for those of you that just came. So this is what keeps the heat out or the heat in the fish tank barn. Um, is, this is ugly. When it warms up, I'll uh, fix that up for sure. And that's the heater. All right, let's check out the chat. I know I missed a whole bunch here. Uh, so Rack is here. Um, hey Rack, how's it going? So let's see. All right. Yeah. Okay. Slippery, slippery fish is here. How, how's it going? Great to see club info on there. Uh, thanks, Lumpy Dog. I was watching Bob's line. Someone mentioned you had some pretty nice long fin white claw. Yes, Lumpy Dog's. I almost bought some white clouds when I was at the swap this weekend. So, uh, the good idiots. Uh, yes. Um, Bob Guppy's here. So, welcome. Welcome, Peter. All right. Uh, the good idiots are doing well. And I actually got a whole bunch more. So, I found something interesting. Um, Slippery Fish actually sold me the Krakadon Lateralis that I have in here. And I ended up putting them, putting some dither fish in with them, and they've come out a lot more. So I put a bunch of long or a couple of longfin variatus platys with them, and they're a lot more active. So I think they've needed some dithers. It's kind of an interesting. Uh, it kind of found it by accident because I moved their tank and I forgot one of them. Yeah, for sure. Um, for sure, um, for sure, Lumpy Dog, we'll uh, have to do that. Because I do want to put some white clouds in with some of the other Gideads that I have. They're, they kind of seem like it would be a, kind of a good match. Because um, they would get some of the Shire Gidead species and have them come out. Now, if you want to have fun, we'll have fun. We'll see how how many of the Gidead names that I can pronounce and remember what I have. Um, I just picked up a whole bunch of new ones. So... We'll go see what kind of which Gideas we have here. So let's we'll play a little game and see what, see if Mike can name all the the fish in the fish tank barn. All right, Gideas we have trout good trout Gideas here. Um, there is a Skiffia Lermaid singular fish in the tank below it. Uh, there are the Krakadon Lateralis that are over there. Um, those are Skiffia multipunctata. Um, over here is. Amica Splendens. Uh, the next tank over from that are the ones that I can't pronounce. Um, and they're like, I'm not even going to try. So, and then I uh, think that's it for the Gadeads. And then, all right. Uh, just finished up some water. Yes, I got to do that too. Um, I got to scrape some Scrape some tanks for sure. Cause I gotta film the uh, upstairs fish room tour. So, um, it'll be high in the uh, Greg Bean. A uh, good tubing project for the summer in Alabama. Will be high nineties during the day and upper seventies at night. So, um, yeah, I imagine that Alabama is pretty hot in the summer. Um. I've been down there for work uh, once, uh, so I could imagine that that would be warm. So, let's see. 
No one's saying hi. <laughs> All right. All right, so uh, real quick here, since we've had some new people come in, I'm going to flip the screen on you guys for just a minute. Oh, okay. So this is the uh, MBI workshop. So uh, it's a 10-year anniversary. So if you guys can make it to Michigan, uh, I would head out and check that out for sure. So it's the... Like I said, 10-year anniversary, July 26th through 28th at the Cranbrook Institute of Science in Bloomfield Hills, Michigan. Uh, if, you've never been to, if you've never been there, it's, uh, it's awesome. It's an awesome place to hold an event. So if you guys are into, you know, into marine breeding, even if you're not, you can learn quite a bit. Um, just about fish in general. There's a, quite a few uh, like people who work at zoos and aquariums that show up to this event. So, I would for sure, uh, for sure check that out. So, see if we got any questions. All right, King and Queen Cichlids, uh, everyone support one another. This hobby is the best. Uh, yep, so, uh, thank you, uh. Thank you, King and Queen Cichlids, for coming out. Um, so, yeah, thank you for the support. I appreciate it. Uh, Josh, uh, usually a few freshwater people in attendance, too. Yes, Josh uh, helps uh, helps everyone, uh, helps with the uh, running, of the, running of this like I do. Uh, eventually, I'm going to have Tal Sweet on, who puts this on. Uh, we're going to talk about the Marine Breeding Initiative itself, plus the workshop. So, working on that. Uh, Palmer Aquatics is here. Uh, hey, how's it going? So, yeah, so if you guys can, uh, if you guys want to come out to this, this is an excellent event. So, just want to pr promote that a little bit. All right, so we're going to flip back again to the, uh, to the door. So, for those of you who've just joined, we'll, we'll run through this again. Uh, but this is the door to the fish tank barn. Keeps all of the heat in. Um, it is not pretty, uh, but uh, considering the polar vortex and it being minus um, 8 million degrees outside, I figure we should do that. Uh, dirty tanking is going to take off. Hey, thank you very much. Uh, thanks for coming out. Um, yeah, Palmer, enjoy your live streams too. I just haven't, uh, I haven't caught all of them yet, but I do uh, catch them when I can. Um, I think that you guys who aren't YouTube creators, uh, it's kind of hard to catch everyone else's live streams when you're working on your own stuff. Um, I know a lot of us do other things other than just YouTube, so it's uh, it's hard to catch up on everyone's streams all the time. Uh, so I try to catch as many as I can from everyone just to, you know, learn things, etc. Uh, Slippery Fish Aquatics is back to work. Hey, yeah, uh, thank you for joining. Um, all right, so we're back to the heater. So this thing is called a Fahrenheit FUH-54. So, uh, so it's electric heater. Uh, it's a, uh, runs on a 240, uh, or sorry, 220 watt system. Uh, Palmer Aquatics, for sure, it's a battle. Also have a new podcast with a ton of other people's. Yeah, I gotta I gotta check out the podcast you have too. I gotta get that. I put that on my phone. But yeah, it is. It's um, you know, you put out your few videos a week, do a live stream. So, yeah, it's, uh, the struggle's real. Uh, so, all right. So this is the Fahrenheit Fu fifty four or Fuh fifty four. You can find these on Amazon. Um, I'm pretty happy with it. Um, it's been 
Uh, it was minus 10 the other day here, and the fish barn was still warm. So fish were fine. So I would say that this is uh, definitely a success. It is a little expensive to run. Um, if you have access to natural gas, you should do that. But uh, but this will work. Um, it has worked. So, you know, just have a backup if you lose power because obviously you're not going to have any heat. So I have a uh, backup uh, propane heater that I can use in here. So uh, Palmer Aquatics, he has one of those heaters too. Yes, um, I would highly recommend them actually. If you even have like a garage or something, uh, it does pretty well. I mean, like I said, this is a two-story. Uh, this is a two-story, you know, one and a half car garage, and it's heating it basically by itself, you know, along with any of the, uh, along of the, you know, along with kind of the running hot water that runs through here. So, and it's not on all the time. I came out here a little bit earlier today. You know, it's not running 24/7 out here either. So, um, can't complain. I hope the, hopefully the door will help a lot too, because that was losing a lot of heat. So. Um, Lumpy Dog, please check out Mob Guppy if you haven't. Yes. Um, so for sure. Um, check out Peter. Um, he he, pro, he uh, profiles uh, new channels every Saturday. So check those out for sure. Uh, heat your four season porch. Yes. Um, that would be a good, uh, good um, use for that too. Um, it's minus 30 here now. Palmer, is that the wind chill or is that the actual temp? <clears throat> I think... Um, so let me see where we're at now. Temperature-wise, we are at now... Um, we are at 4 degrees. And the uh, lowest today is supposed to get minus 7. Uh, tomorrow, the high... It's changed now to minus two. So it will be wonderful tomorrow. So temp damn. So well, I just got demonetized. Oh well, for the zero money I make on YouTube. <laughs> Minnesota? Wow. Um, yep, so we're in Michigan here, so, uh, yeah, I can see that. Yeah, yeah, see, the lake helps us a little bit. <laughs> I got demonetized, yeah, I got demonetized, well, I probably, I said the, uh, the D word, and so I probably did, but that's fine, for the zero money I make on YouTube. It's kind of a joke. Uh, Greg Bean, I don't know how you all do it. Would have to move ASAP. Um, it's kind of part of life, I guess, a way I'll put it. Uh, I'll say it's basically, I kind of enjoy having the four seasons. Uh, this is a little much, uh, you know, the minus, you know, negative temperatures. So, um, yeah, so it's not good. That part's not good, but if it's like in the normal like twenties, it's not that bad. You get used to it. Um, but yeah, so <laughs> yeah, that's that's funny. Yeah, I just I just came out when I said it. I was like, oh, we have two seasons here: summer to summer to winter here in Alabama. So, uh, I, I would imagine that in the northern part of Alabama is probably a lot cooler than the south. When I went there, I was near Mobile, and so that was um, that was you know that was pretty warm, and that was in we went in like March, and I think it was like sunny, seventy, eighty degrees. So it, it was, I had nothing to complain about. So. All right, we've been going now for about 40 minutes or so. Uh, so this is one of my sumps. I think that, so this is basically a simple Rubbermaid tote. Uh, we make, uh, you know, basically 
It's uh, filter floss uh, with this, any sort of strainer you can use. Uh, Tolerable will work. Uh, and then basically some bio balls. And then uh, basically from there you just have a return pump. So a lumpy dog, fall in Michigan is amazing. Winter sucks, spring comes late, and then it's hot and muggy. Yeah, it, it's been kind of off and on. Kind of with the winters and like um, it's kind of a weird weird thing. So uh, I do like to ice fish and I don't know if I'm going to go this year or not because after it's going to be minus 50 for like the next two days it's, after that it's going to be 40 degrees again. So so yeah so it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be kind of a up and down kind of weather thing. So which means like basically everyone will get sick after that. All right. So uh, I'm gonna ask this to anyone else in the chat. Did anyone else get any new fish this weekend? I know um, Dirty Tanking did. Um, I was at the Grand Valley Aquarium Club swap, uh, which was a lot of fun. I got to see Lucas uh, Sergeant Tanks. So that was very good, or Sergeant Tank, I guess. I always say it wrong. And that was a lot of fun. Uh, picked up some really cool fish. Uh, got some more Gadea species, which you guys will see on Thursday. So, um, anyone else get anything new? So do you guys have any auctions coming up? Uh, I know this weekend there's one uh, for the motor, the Michigan Cichlid Association here. Um, it's at the, uh, it's at, it's in uh, Madison Heights, Michigan. Um, it's at a, um, I think it's like a, some sort of union hall, I think. So I'm going to flip it back to the MBI site here real quick. Uh, just one last time, if you guys are interested in the Marine Breeding Initiative, uh, check it out. Uh, it's July, end of July here in Michigan. And I'll actually put the website here too. Hold on a second. So that's the uh, that's the MBI workshop site. So basically, from there, it's, uh, there's not a lot of information out yet. Uh, speakers aren't normally announced this early. Uh, so it's basically right now. I mean, you can buy tickets. There's a uh, normally how it works is there's four speakers. Uh, the raffle is at the end, and then in the middle, um, it, lunch is provided, and then on uh, Sunday. Uh, the person who organizes it has a picnic basically at his house. Uh, he lives on a lake uh, near the venue. So, uh, thank you, Lumpy Dog. Uh, yep, it's been, I really thank the community for its support for uh, um, 400 subs. Um, it's kind of a, it's kind of funny how that works. Uh, it kind of rolls on itself. You know, I had a goal, like when I started, to, like just get 100 subs and see what happens. And we're now at 400, so um, I want to thank all of you, the viewers, for the support. I uh, really thank the community. Um, it's been a lot of fun. One thing, too, I want to mention uh, for any of you out there, um, uh, Rob uh, from Flip Aquatics put out a video uh, earlier. I was on the from Aquashella, and basically, uh, if you make a video, uh, there'll be like a donation made to either the Coral Restoration Project or the uh, Project Piava. So there was like a Team Saltwater and Team Freshwater. So kind of torn between what I'll do because uh, I've known about the Coral Restoration Project for quite a few years. Uh, so for those of you who don't know like my aquarium background, 
is uh, primarily in saltwater. And then uh, from there we've gotten, um, from there we've I've really kind of branched out into fresh water, water, uh, fresh water. So I've taken a, a little bit of a different path. So Aqua Apprentice is here. Hey, thanks uh, for coming by. Um, I know you were streaming tonight too, so I hope it went well. Uh, I think it was your first one, so if you, uh, you know, uh, once you guys hop off here, check him out for sure. Um, it was his first stream, so I remember doing my first one. Uh, it was pretty interesting, a lot of fun. So we'll head back real quick to the presentation one more time. Let you guys kind of walk through it. So, oh, no problem. Um, yeah, it's a it's a different experience. You got to be kind of on your toes for sure. So uh, this is the door. Uh, this is from. Uh, uh, this is basically what keeps the uh, heat in the fish tank barn from the front door, from the uh, side door. Uh, it is not pretty, but uh, it works. So uh, when it gets a little warmer out, I'm probably going to take a, uh, you know, like a drywall knife and clean it up some. Um, I, that bottom panel keeps coming off, so i got to figure out what to do with it as well. But... Uh, Cool, it was a, uh, yeah, see, Lumpy Dog still here. Let's see what else we got. All right. So, you guys have any other duct tape will fix anything? Yes, there is actually some duct tape on that. It's just not in the picture. Um, so, I did kind of duct tape. the. What it was happening was the bottom part kept catching on the concrete floor and kept ripping it off so it's now the bottom part is now uh, duct taped on so it doesn't go anywhere so uh, this is our favorite um, FU514 yes duct tape will fix almost anything duct tape will not fix a leaking fish tank though and I have not tried it but I know it won't um, Aqua Prentice. I am in uh, Metro Detroit, so I live in the uh, suburbs of uh, Detroit. So that's where I'm at. You know, obviously, don't want to give out too much. You know, especially with, uh, you know, I guess I'll hit on that real quick with what happened to Jeffro. Um, that was uh, unfortunate. Um, you know, I'm glad everything worked out okay, but uh, yeah. So it's. Um, You know that's unfortunate, and I hope they find the uh, individual or individuals who uh, who did that because that's uh, you know one it's a rate, uh, waste of uh, resources to you know some, some really bad stuff could have happened. So uh, hopefully that gets resolved rather quickly. Um, Aqua Prentice, yes, yeah, so it's extra cold. Yes, um, it is extra cold. Uh, right now um, outside it's four degrees. So. Yeah, Greg B. Yep, for sure. That was unfortunate. Um, I actually got to see Jeremy uh, the next day, so he and I talked for quite a while about it. But yeah, it's uh, that is unfortunate. So, but everything thankfully worked out. Um, hopefully, he got his new window. Uh, hopefully, they put that in yesterday. So I think um, there was kind of no harm, no foul, I guess, at the end. But kind of a unfortunate thing because I was really. Uh, Digging the topic they did too. Um, Lumpy Dog blames the Russians. Um, I think Bob had the best um, answer yesterday. Um, it's probably somebody he did business with. Um, that's kind of what I think. Um, yeah, the, I, Aqua, um, Aqua Apprentice, I agree. Uh, glad his dogs were. Yes, that could have been. Not a good scene either. Um, yeah, we don't have. I don't have any dogs. Um, I do have. Uh, we do have uh, three cats here. So I think the one cat would just kind of uh, take off. Um, the other ones, um, I think. 
the older one uh, might do something. He's, he's got a little bit of an attitude. And the other one would be just kind of ambivalent and run away. Like it would go hide somewhere. So, But uh, you never know. Animals are funny sometimes that way. But, but cats, I don't think they have the same sort of uh, instinct. <laughs> Dogs will lick them to death. <laughs> I've, there's plenty of those out there, too. So, all right. You guys uh, have any more questions? Um, I think we're getting to the uh, time. Is it? It's good. We're gonna get. We're uh, been going for about fifty minutes. So, you guys have anything else? If not, um. If not, I think we're gonna we're gonna give it about another minute or two. Uh, if you guys have any other questions, and I think I'm gonna shut it down for the night. Uh, but uh, had a lot of fun, so thank you guys all for coming out. Uh, really, uh, really enjoyed it. Um, actively breeding anything right now? Um, uh, there's stuff breeding in here um, on its own. Uh, the clownfish breeding project um, has been on hold for a little bit, just because I need to set up some. Uh, some other tanks for it, and I just haven't done it yet. Uh, but that's uh, so. That's really um, everything else. Guppies are breeding. Platies are breeding. Um, I really want to get the Gadeids to breed. Uh, we can talk one day about the Gadeids. Uh, maybe I can get Andy to come on. Um, if you guys check out Andy Perkowski's channel, um, he has a ton of knowledge on the Gadeids, uh, way more than I have. Um, so, uh, if you guys are into that thing, I would check him out. Um, Aqua Apprentice, thank you. Found a new channel from live streaming. Yes, thank you, Aqua Apprentice. Uh, I'm going to check your stuff out as well. I just haven't had a chance yet. Um, anything else? Um, I do have some cichlids actively breeding as well. Um, I know that the um, zebra oblicodins are holding. Um, I'm going to try to colony breed those if I can. Um, I may have to pull them. And then obviously I want to breed the, um, like I said, the Gadeids. Um, guppies are are breeding like they like guppies breed. Um, really want to get the Ciprochromus going at some point, but I don't think they're ready yet. Is Andy low? Andy's um, Andy's in the Chicagoland area, so um, he's um, he's out of Illinois. But uh, I think he comes around this way every so often. Lumpy dog, but yeah, he's got a ton. Um, uh, the ones I got this weekend, um, I got from a gentleman who lives in Kalamazoo, um, the Kalamazoo area, I believe. And um, I saw him at the American Live Bear Association too, so he's um, so I got a lot from him, and they they have like the location name, you know, like. So they have like all the all the markers on it and everything. So that's so I keep track of all that stuff um, on there. Because like the saltwater world, in terms of like that sort of stuff, is really I'm gonna call it the wild west. Uh, basically, the core, you know, like clownfish, for example. You know, like for guppies, there's a standard. Um. So, but yeah, we're gonna shut it down. Um. So. If, you guys want go check out Corvus. Uh, Corvus is live right now, so I'm gonna shut it down, and we'll catch you later. <laughs>